deadline. And so what that means is I was in DIQ. <laughs> so how, how many of you can relate? And she was my waitress at Logan's Roadhouse. So I went into Logan's Roadhouse this day and I was sitting there actually with another consultant and Lindsay came up to the table. And before she could even get her name out, y'all, I said, I just earned a free car and it's right there. And it was right outside of the window of where I was eating at table 52. She told me the table number because it changed her life that day too. Y'all, but I was in DIQ. So I was smart. And I said, I'm Brittany. I do free facials and makeovers with Mary Kay. And I would absolutely love to borrow your face. And she said, yes. And I said, great. What's your name? What's your phone number? She said, Lindsay, I got her phone number y'all. And I made sure that the next day I called her and I booked her for a facial. Now, the funny part of this story is when I called her to book her for the facial, I said, when are you free? Do you have this date or this day? She goes, well, I'm actually free today. And it was the next day. And I said, okay, but I was a DIQ. So I drove to her house right then and there. And I said to her, have you ever thought about doing something like this before? By the way, some of these things you should be writing down. This was how simple I recruited her. I said, have you ever thought about doing something like this before? She said, no. That's most of the time what people are going to say to you is no, because they haven't genuinely thought about doing something like Mary Kay before. I mean, I don't think we all twiddle our thumbs and think, I want to do Mary Kay when I grow up because we're not told about it. But when we are, we all of a sudden are like, I want to do this forever and ever. Amen. Right. But she said no. And I said, well, I think you'd be great. What would it take to get you started today? And she said, well, I guess just how much does it take? And I told her and she joined. Y'all, I had a goal with a deadline. I shudder to think if I wasn't in DIQ, would I have recruited Lindsay, then Freisteller, now Creamer? I don't know. You work differently, right? When you have a goal with a deadline. So let me tell you about another goal with a deadline. Our first pink Cadillac. We finished our very first pink Cadillac um, in June and uh, we picked it up in September. And I couldn't have waited any longer for that car because I based it off of the deadline of Jake and I getting married. I had never dreamed of anything at my wedding except for I wanted a pink Cadillac to be at that church driving us away. No, most people probably dream of their dress and dream of their hair. And No, no, no. I had to have a pink Cadillac there. In fact, um, one of my friends said to me at that point, she goes, well, if you don't earn it in June, you could earn it by September and it might still be there in time. And I looked at her and I was like, oh no, no, no. We are earning this June 30th. Y'all listen. And I hope you write this down a goal with a deadline. You are more intentional when you have a goal with a deadline. Let's talk about one more. Well, we were, it was May of this past year, 2023. Eight days before the end of May, I got a phone call and that phone call sounded something like, hey, Brittany, we know that you want to finish your national area and walk across the seminar stage for the 60th anniversary. Oh, and by the way, I just had three people submit May 1st for DIQ. Okay, so they're in their first month, um, but you're going to need to finish all of the qualifications of your national area and have June as kind of like a little watch month in order for you to walk across that seminar stage. I had to call three girls who had just submitted DIQ on May 1st and say to them, by the way, you're going to get to $13,500 in production and 24 active team members, and you might only have eight. Isn't this so exciting? And they all did it. Every single one of them finished and finished with abundance because of a goal with a deadline. So if you're in DIQ right now, they finished in eight days and Memorial Day was in there. One of them was on vacation and she finished because of a goal. Are you writing this down yet? With a deadline. And I want to ask you, are you elongating the amount of time just due to the qualifications that the company gives us? The company says that we can take from one to two to three and maybe even four months to finish up DIQ. But these ladies truthfully did it in eight days. The task at hand will a lot will a lot to the amount of time that it's given. Have you ever had to get ready really fast because or clean your house really fast because company was coming over and you found out 20 minutes before? You can get ready fast, you can clean your house that fast too. But when you know a week ahead of time, it might take you the whole entire week to clean the house. I want to ask you, how fast are you cleaning your house right now? 
They got the job done in eight days. And I believe you can too. And here, my friends, is why it's worth it. It is worth it because of how many dreams are attached to you finishing the goal and having the goal with the deadline. Because if you think about it, listen to all these dreams, like to, to our national area, all of those sales directors, but what about all of the new customers that you gain? All of the new customers are winning because they have Mary Kay skincare and makeup on their faces. Every new team member you add, they are gaining because you went after your goal with a deadline and their dream is attached to yours. What about every new team member you add? Their, their dreams are attached to you making your dream come true. Every new team member they add from that team member and all of those team members' families, y'all, their dreams are attached to your yes and your decision to have the thrill of the finish line, right? And so as I was thinking about it, I thought of one of my offspring sales directors, her name is Lynn, and she found out during qualifications that her husband of 30 years, um, it was her DIQ qualifications and cars, that she was, her husband of 30 years had been cheating on her for 15 of those years. And I want you to know that if it weren't for her Mary Kay business, she said she would have never made it through. But her Mary Kay business had built her confidence. It had built who she was. Y'all, Lynn's dream, Lynn's decision, because she told me that if it weren't for her Mary Kay business, she's pretty sure she would have swallowed a bottle of pills and been done, was attached to my yes. 17 years ago, it was attached to a lot of other yeses because she was from a fishbowl I set up an hour and a half away from me. And, and she had a recruiter who had a recruiter, who had a recruiter, who had a recruiter, and so on and so forth. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. She is in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Your yeses will lead to the thrill of a finish line and a dream that is attached to your goal. Do you feel it? Can you see it? That is why one more yes to saying, I'm going to pick up the phone and do a booking, your next best yes of, of making sure that you go get the name and get the phone number of someone who looks sharp so you don't kick yourself later. Like, what if she was your Lynn? What if she was your Lindsay? And I'm a warm chatter. Rochelle warm chattered me in Bed Bath & Beyond 17 years ago. What if she would have not felt well that day? My dreams were attached to her yes to y'all. I asked Lynn recently, I said, Lynn, can you tell me if and how Mary Kay has changed your life? I need you to hear this. She said, in January of 2021, I was in a dark and sad place. My whole world was crumbling around me. Brittany reached out to me because I had shown interest in joining only for the discount. On January 29th, she asked, what was holding me back? And out came a list of limiting beliefs that I had been told to me my entire life. I'll never be successful. I'm not good enough. And the list goes on. I joined that day. And what came in my starter kit was way more than a handbag, product, and training materials. There was a family of women I didn't know I needed, a director that believed in me more than anyone in my entire life, even my mom. Over the last three years, Mary Kay has helped me grow, become stronger, and believe that I do belong. I am worthy and that I am a daughter of the king and he wants more for me. I have learned I could do hard things and come out stronger. I've been in the valley and on the mountain, which has helped me to become stronger in my faith. I am believing and dreaming again, which are two things I lost a long time ago. Y'all. She went on and during our national qualifications earned two cars in eight weeks during all of that turmoil. Your decision to say yes to your business daily, your decision to make one more call has so many dreams attached to it. And let me paint a picture for you. What will your finish line with this goal look like? I think about it and the finish line was so sweet. There have been so many, the picking up of a pink Cadillac, the picking up of your first car. There's nothing like it. You sign your name in one place, you drive away, you feel like you stole the car. You're like, are the police going to come get me? And everyone who's laughing has done it before. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I hope not. Okay. And how about the goal of um, becoming a sales director and walking across that seminar stage and the number one national giving you your oath. Oh my goodness. Who's going to be there with you? Who's going to watch that happen? Who's going to be at your car pickup? What are your kids or your grandkids going to wear to watch you pick that up and watch you make that dream come true? I'm telling you, it feels so good. Our most recent win. I'm going to grab a picture because I was going to have pictures for you, but that didn't work, obviously. Our most recent win. 
was walking across the seminar stage as a brand new national area. We've planted that seed of a goal in our family's lives for years. My little girl, Kinley, was praying for it for years at her Christian um, education. That It's private. It's a private school. It's very expensive. But guess what? Because of Mary Kay. Oh, I have to unmute her now. Can you? Can we find her and unmute Janice? Where's Janice? Oh, I have to find you, Janice. Oh, I see it. Because of Mary Kay, I was able um, to pay for that education, that private school education. So they were praying for us every day while they were in kindergarten and first grade. And we made that dream come true, y'all. And this is a beautiful picture on stage of my family, our three little girls with Kinley Grace, my oldest, my eight-year-old, giving me this high five. And, oh, look at this, dreams come true. This is what happens. I promised them Disney World, y'all. That's us at Disney World. What will you do to celebrate? That's us picking up a pink Escalade that I had dreamed of for years upon years. Because prior to that, we had three little kids in, crunched inside of that X, whatever car we have as a sales director, pink Cadillac, and they would hit each other and elbow each other and yell. And now they're all spread apart with their screens and their Bose speakers. You can move to the next one, Janice. And and so whose dreams are attached to yours? This is me being prayed over with national sales directors that came to my debut, a dream come true moment that I had dreamed of for years, but never even knew that we could actually hit or the three girls and their sparkly rainbow dresses again at our debut in Columbus, Ohio, impacting 600 women's lives and their families' lives forever. What will your finish look like? If you keep going, you're going to see eventually that picture that I was showing with the frame, maybe. Um, oh, there's some of the women. We didn't get all of them, but look at those women's lives. It actually goes on. That's only like a quarter of it. And that's who helped us to finish this national area. Y'all, those women have families. Women that you're recruiting have families and their dreams are attached to yours. If you keep going down, you're going to see more. Uh, actually, those were all the ones that okay. came through and the rest blew up. <laughs> that's okay. Ready? This is my 89 year old grandma. And she was on the seminar stage with me. You know, sometimes, and there's a beautiful picture. I didn't actually send this one to you, Janice, of my dad in tears. My engineer dad, who is 72 degrees. He doesn't cry. He doesn't really laugh that much. He's 72. But there's a shot that Dan Madsen, Lisa Madsen's husband, got of my dad on stage crying because he was just so proud. You have people out there, my friends, that are so proud of you that are going to be so proud of you when you cross that finish line, when you set a goal with a deadline. My 89 year old grandma, I don't know how much longer she would have been able to physically make it to that stage. And I'm sure you have the same thing. So I encourage you to think of the thrill of the finish line when you're making those calls. I encourage you to think of the thrill of the finish line when you get the nose to think of who's going to be with you, because I promise you their dreams are attached to yours. And I am cheering for you, all of you Reds, going DIQ, going directorship, going leadership, because I know you'll get it done. So I love you. And I hope that's what you wanted, Janice. <laughs> I don't know what you said, right? Sure, it was amazing. You know, it's nothing like watching everything scroll around says, I'm sorry, you have no internet 25 times. I'm like, and then the screen shares kept moving, you know? I'm so glad it wasn't a regular beauty event we had guests on. But you know what? This is why you're human, you know? Brittany, yeah. thank you. I'm so grateful I co-hosted everybody ahead of time. But thank you for sharing. I know that what you shared was great. We asked you to cross the finish line. How many of you are so excited after talking to Brittany? It was like, oh my gosh, the finish line is so there so thank you so Brittany I know that you have something else to go to and you're on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing so we just want to say thank you for being on here tonight we so do appreciate you and I think Diane's recording this thank you for that so let's give it up for Brittany James thank you Brittany I will see you at leadership because I'm going to both since I live 18 minutes away so I will see you at one of those um, anyway so thank you for being on here tonight and I, I apologize uh, for being, um, yeah, whatever. Um, if you have not gotten this or seen this yet, I want you to know this is my very favorite new thing. How many of you like to be organized? You guys need to get one of these and your team, all of the people on your team need to get one of these. Okay, this is the new six most important things to do. The Lucite thing that you can wipe off. Oh my gosh, the best gift ever. Well, 
I have a new director. I'm asking Stephanie to speak tonight. And then we also have another director named Tina Kirby, who is speaking on tonight also. So I'm going to turn it over. Um, my new director is Stephanie. She lives in a very small town. Um, she'll tell you her story and um, it's so great. She would tell you how to, how great it is going to be to seminar, but she's never been. Um, and so this is her, well, I'll let her tell your story. So give it up for Stephanie Tune, my brand new sales director. So go ahead, Stephanie, and we'll let you speak next. So go for it, girl. Hi, everybody. I don't know how to follow up behind Brittany because she's amazing. And um, she, like me, talks with her hands. So you're going to see a lot of this with me, too. Um, I am in a very, very small town in Northern California. This is my second go around with Mary Kay. About 35 years ago, I'm dating myself. I had just graduated from high school and a woman in another small town recruited me. And what is really sad to say is I don't remember her name. And that's because there was no leadership. Um, so I didn't last very long in Mary Kay. I went to college in Texas. I ran as far away from this small town in California to Texas. And I got an education there and I loved it. But I stopped doing Mary Kay. And looking back, I really wish I'd stuck with it because I was in Texas, right? <laughs> and where, I mean, I could have met Mary Kay and I have some regrets there. But I had stopped doing Mary Kay. I married a military man and we moved to Korea. Um, I ended up having seven children. I have 12 grandbabies. Um, my husband passed away and I eventually moved back to California, my hometown, to finish raising my two youngest kids near my parents. And I'm back in the town that I grew up in. It's very small. Um, but it. I, met, I have a girlfriend. Her name is Julia. And we went to church together and we went to church together for a few years and I stopped going to that church Um but I never stopped my relationship with her because she was a really warm, loving person. And I knew that there was something great about her. Well, one day she came to me and said, you need to sell Mary Kay. And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I, I really don't. Thank you so much. I did this once before and did not have a great experience. And I don't think so. And she says, no, 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 you really have to. And at the time, um, I am in sales. Uh, it's my I make a living that way. I work at a radio station. I work for a company who has three radio stations and a, a mobile website. And so I sell advertising and I make a pretty good living. And my children um, were just finishing high school. I had finally gotten them done. It's, you know, after the seventh, I'm exhausted and I can't wait for them to, to get on their own. And um, COVID hit and I lost a bunch of my customers during COVID with advertising. And my girlfriend, Julia, said, you've got to do this. You're going to love it. Everything is done virtually. And when she said everything was done virtually, I was like, oh, OK, maybe I can do this. I like virtual. Virtual is good um, because we were, you know, every, just like everybody, we were shut down. We had to be at home. And I thought, well, I could really do this. So I signed up under Julia again. And um, we're still in this together. She's wonderful. She's a good friend of mine. Um, and I really decided that this was going to work for me. I had wonderful leadership. Janice is my director and my national sales director. And I am blessed to have her, even though she's all the way in Texas and I'm in California. But she's wonderful. What you get from your leadership is one of the most important things. I, If you have a great leader, do everything they tell you to do. Because why on earth should we reinvent the wheel? It's already been done for us. Everybody knows Janice is amazing. I'm blessed to have her. I know a lot of you have other sales directors and national sales directors in your, in your tribe and listen to what they have to say. I, I go to bed every night, I make a list of the six most important things for me to do tomorrow along with yelling at my grandchildren, taking care of my parents who are both older and doing my full-time job. And if I know that, if I know when I go to bed at night, what those six things are I have to do tomorrow morning, it makes getting up in the morning and doing my day so much easier. What you have in your corner with your lead, whoever she may be, is um, if she's giving you good information and she's got your back and you're writing down your six things to do every day, you are going to go through DIQ so fast. I was blessed. I went through it in three months. I've, I'm coming up to my two-year anniversary with Mary Kay. Um, it'll be, I think, in February. I've only been to two retreats. Um, I've never been to seminar. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to my first leadership um, this month in Texas. I'm super excited. Everyone tells me that it's going to blow my socks off because I thought going to retreat and seeing all these girls jumping up and down, singing and 
waving pink pom-poms and stuff. I was like, what is happening? So I know that when I go to leadership, it'll be uh, 12 times that. And I'm super excited to see it. Um, I've been a director now just for a month. I finished in December. No, I finished in November. I finished in November. I finished in three months. And December was my first month going as a director. And it was good. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not super easy. It's something you have to really dedicate yourself to. Make a list. Um, think about everything you want to accomplish and then just check those things off. Um, it, you will run into people who will tell you that they would love to be with Mary Kay and they're going to help you and then they don't. Um, but you're also going to run into people who touch your heart and you touch theirs and they're going to be the ones that see you cross the finish line. You need to get those good, great team members on your team. And I know you know them. They're the girls at the coffee shop. They're your favorite waitress. They're people you may work with. They're your son's girlfriends or ex-girlfriends. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> it happens. I got seven, I got seven kids. I got some ex-girlfriends in the pocket there. And I recruited one of them, and she's amazing. I love her to death. And she we go to church together. But get those people on your team. And you're gonna have some people who maybe only sign up because they want to buy the product. And that's cool too, because you need them. Um, but make sure you get the people who who see your vision. You tell them. Because I know myself, losing a spouse with children, um, even though it's been a number of years, it still makes me cry. Um, but you want to make sure that you are blessing a woman's life. You want to make sure that you are giving them a way to take care of themselves, to take care of their children, and to take care of, you, of their grandchildren. Um, when I was going through DIQ, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. And I had to flip everything and go stay with my mom and dad, which I had not been in my childhood bedroom in a really long time. And I woke up one night to my mom standing in my room and she's 77 and she's just staring at me. It's the middle of the night. And I thought, oh, <laughs> what is happening? You know, Jesus help me. And she just said, I just wanted to make sure you were OK. And I said, I'm just fine, but you're scaring the bejesus out of me. So, you know, mom, I'm trying to work and take care of you and dad and go through DIQ. And this is a lot and it's going to make a really good book someday. <laughs> but you guys are driving me crazy. Um, so I know one person, a very wise woman told me during DIQ that we cannot let life get in our way. And that is so true. Um, my dad getting cancer um, was was huge and having to take care of him and take care of my mom, who's the caregiver. And then she decided to have cataract surgery during that time. And I was like, oh my gosh, mom, are you serious? This is when we're going to do this. So then she couldn't see and she couldn't take care of anything. Uh, so I'm taking care of both my mom and dad. And still somehow I went through DIQ. Um, it was amazing. It was a great experience. Do I want to do it again? No. So I'm going to be a director forever. I'm not going to lose it because I don't want to, I don't want to redo it. Um, and I, I know you all can do this. It's, um, it takes dedication. It's not the easiest thing in the world. I'm not going to lie to you. There are days when you will call your director and you want to bang your head against the table and go, why did I do this? What am I doing? But then you realize why you did it. You did it for your kids. You did it for your spouse. You did it for yourself. And you did it to bless all these women's lives that you are going to bless. You're going to give maybe somebody a way out of a situation. You're going to give someone that money to pay for their kids' private school. I'm super, super lucky that my first red jacket was my daughter-in-law, Alana. Um, she is she's the best mother to two of my baby grandsons, and um, she's one of my wives. And it just makes me ball because um, I want them to have a life that I was not able to give their dad. Um, it's really important to me to be able to pass on um, wonderful things to my children and to my grandchildren. So to see her as a red jacket, working hard, being able to provide my grandchildren, I've already won. I, I'm, I've already won. So find, everyone says you have a why. Everyone says find your why, but find it and hold it, hold it deep in your heart. And if you've got to write it down on your six things every night, that you know, what your why is to get you through the next day when people tell you no, when people say, oh, Mary Kay's for old ladies. 
I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm, you call me old, <laughs> you know? Um, but so Mary Kay has evolved and changed, and but we still have that great Mary Kay culture that we all need to hang on to. Um, just present yourself really well. Show that you love what you do and that you believe in the product because we all use it, right? Um, and you're going to win. You're all winners. You're all going to win. Just, you know, one step ahead every single day. Find someone that you can talk to. Find someone who means a lot to you who believes in what you believe and talk to that person every single day. If you have to talk to him every single day, say, I, I just, I just met this, this really mean lady and she threw my sample back in my face at save Mart or, or whatever. Right. And then talk to your friend and she'll say, I love you. You're going to be great. And people will then call you and you need to be that person. You need to say, I love you. You're going to be great. And you do that every single day. You guys are all going to succeed. Absolutely. I would not be where I am without the people I put in my life. Put positive people in your life. Let them be people who believe the same thing you do. They want the same things out of life that you want. And you guys will go to the moon. Absolutely. I know every single one of you will. I have lots and lots of faith in you. Um, I will keep talking until Janice tells me to be quiet. And I think she disappeared again. I don't see her on screen. Um, but DIQ is great. I'm really glad it's over. Um, don't give up. Just just don't give up. I, I see a lot of your faces on here and I know a lot of you. I, can, I hope all of you are going to be at leadership. I know there were goals to meet for everybody to be there. And if you're not going to be at leadership, I hope you find me at seminar. Um, I'm on Facebook and on Janice's website. And if any of you ever want to talk, I'm I'm available. I would love to be your person to get, you know, positive reinforcement from. I think it'd be fun. And um, what's really great about Mary Kay is when you think you're alone, you're not. There are so many women out there who are just like you or have a story that's similar to yours or a, a much worse story, M much worse story. And your heart, your heart is there. And all these women that you meet, you know, you're just your best friends. I'm so blessed that I get to room leadership with two amazing women, uh, Lily and Sue, when I'm in Texas. And I'm so excited to be able to get blessed from them and to bless them back. Um, I've made some great friends. I know I've only been in not two years yet. And I think my biggest regret is I do not remember the lady's name 35 years ago that first recruited me into Mary Kay. I feel so sad about that because um, I, I, she missed it and I missed it, you know. So don't be that leader that misses out. Don't be that consultant that misses out. Um, because you don't have good leadership. If for some reason you don't have somebody, call me. I would love to be that for you and talk to you. I think we can all lift up and help each other out. And I don't know what happened to Janice. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for me? Do you want to come off your microphone and shoot me a question? No? Nobody? Come on. Lily, you got a question? No? Jill? <laughs> Tina Kirby, you're adorable. I've seen you smiling all night. <laughs> Where are you what from? What a story. I, <laughs> I love your story. Thank and you. And so I, I, I want to know what town are you from in California? It's a small town. We know that. But where? I'm in Sonora, California. It's in Tuolumne County. So we're about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Yosemite. Um, we're up from Stanislaus County from Modesto, Oakdale, that area. It snowed here a lot last um, the last few days. It's cold. We had a low of 18 this morning. It was kind of hazardous getting to work. But, I mean, nothing like what's going on in Texas. I guess there's a lot of storms there. So, um, I, so Tina is going to be sharing tonight, right, Tina? You yep. are? Yep. Okay, well, yeah, then I, I'm, I'm going to go and sign off. And why don't you start? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um so I'm on the other side of the world. So I'm down in Georgia and um, I, I'm going to give you like a really great background on me because um, I've been, it's my second time, but I haven't, I've never left. <laughs> so I've been building my Mary Kay business. March will be 16 years. And prior to that, I worked for um, corporate America. And uh, when Mary Kay found me originally 16 years ago, um, I was working for a little intimate apparel company. You guys probably have heard of it, Calvin Klein. And so I was traveling two to three weeks out of the month, crazy busy, 
two daughters, um, competitive dancers. And that's how Mary Kay found me is through the dance moms. <laughs> so that was fun because when I was out traveling, all the moms got together and said, Hey, you know, all these dancers, they need makeup. And Tina, we think you would be a great person to go talk to the Mary Kay lady. So I was picked amongst the moms to go have that conversation. So I had the conversation and um, the lady that recruited me, she asked me, well, you know, hey, will you come to our studio? I'm like, oh, well, okay, fine. So I went because I didn't have any girlfriends because I worked out of my home and I traveled all the time. So I went there and then I went to another event and another event and another event. Anybody have those guests, right? I was a professional guest for about three months. And then one day God just really grabbed a hold of my heart and I called her up and said, Hey, I think I want to do this thing. And so I started my business March 30th, 2008. And through that journey, through that year, um, for about 10 months, um, you know, I worked my corporate job and, you know, worked my Mary Kay business. And I think if most of you ladies on here probably know what happened in 2008 and 2009, lots and lots of people lost their jobs right? Kind of what we're starting to see right now with people getting laid off, people not being, you know, jobs not being replaced, you know, people getting laid off, they're not replacing those positions. And um, January 8th, which is kind of funny because today is January the 8th. So 15 years ago today, I got laid off from my corporate job. And so I started working my business and uh, was able to work it for a long time, became a director before, and um, I allowed life to get to me and I ended up stepping down in 2017, but God had a purpose for everything because he always does. And um, through that, through that almost seven year journey now, God has taken me through a wilderness um, and I've grown in so many other ways. And, um, January of this year, I got a call from my director and my national, uh, Donna and Sweeney. And we started talking and she, um, as I say, kind of threw some seeds at me that day and said, you know, Hey, you know, we'd love to have you back. I never really stopped my business. I, I didn't work it. I just basically maintained. So through that, through this year, life happens. And like, you know, Stephanie said, there's there's always things that are going to happen through the process, right? And so this year, um, I became a grandma for the first time. Um, you know, so that happened. Um, I've been working now for the past seven years, another job, another corporate job. So working full time, very stressed in the job that I'm at. And, um, you know, through that process, I knew... I needed to be back in Mary Kay because, you know, like Stephanie said, you know, this is a place where we lift each other up. We love each other. Um, we can pray for each other. We're there for each other, no matter what. And, um, August the 8th of this year, I got a co on a coaching call with my director and my national Donna and Sweeney. And, um, again, throwing some seeds, prayed together, and knew that the Holy Spirit was really moving to bring me back into leadership in Mary Kay. So I guess I'm, I'm here to give a little hope too for those that have been in a while, maybe, or maybe it's the second time around that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a decision and it's really about, you know, what changed then and now is my relationship with the Lord is a lot stronger than it was then. And, um, you know, being mentored and coached by a Christ following woman, let me just tell you um, what Stephanie said. We have the greatest leaders in Mary Kay. And if you have the privilege of grabbing a hold of one of them, grab a hold because you're not going to get any better direction, mentoring, coaching than right in front of us. And I love it because it's, you know, we pick each other up, right? We praise each other to success. We, we lift each other up. So, um, again, that, that was August 8th. Um, and so I knew that the Holy spirit had laid, you know, Tina, you need to be a sales director again and Mary Kay and not just for you, because you have to have a cry, a crying. Why is what I've been taught. 
um, which is your fa my family. And so, you know, being able to do this um, to show my daughters, you know, we, we never, we never quit. We don't give up. You know, you guys can see the little signs behind me here. This is like my little, my, my little sanctuary that I come into every day that really fills me up. It's like, don't give up. We, we keep moving forward. And so I had like a law for seven years, but now I'm back. And so um, I started working my business. And when I say life happens, like Stephanie said, oh my gosh, guys, once you make that decision, because number one, you need to make the decision, you know, I'm going to be a DIQ, you know, you, you need eight to get in, make the decision on September 30th. I had so many other things going on that day. My brother was coming in town from uh, Maryland. My daughter, you know, needed me to help to watch the baby while she got her hair done and all these different things. And I had three people that was active in my team. And I, I got quiet with the Lord that morning and said, okay, Lord, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but, um, and I would recommend for any of you out, out listening, um, what Don recommended for me is experiencing God workbook. And so I dove into that. And so that week, so listen, I just want to read the last part because, and I'll get choked up because it's when we spend our time where we need to with him, he always directs our path straight, always. And reminds us each and every day, you know, who we are and whose we are. And reminded me this day because I, you know, again, crazy was going on in my house. And I said, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm getting away from everybody. I'm going to the bedroom. I'm getting quiet. God laid all these women's names on my heart. And then this was the last line that I read that day in my, in my quiet time. So this is in the morning before I finished. Believe me. I will never give you an order without releasing my power to enable it to happen. Trust me and obey me and it will happen. So who are you listening to? Are you listening to what God's words promises is? You know, his promise is, is there. And so all day when I got anxious, because we all do, right? We all have those moments like, oh my gosh, how am I, how's this going to happen? How's this going to happen? And I just kept on saying, nope, 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 nope. This morning he said, trust and obey and it will happen. Trust and obey and it will happen. And that day, that night, ladies, I walked in and finished, added five new team members in one night and, and got into DIQ. And of course that began the process, right? from October, November, December, lots of life happened. You know, let's just, you know, September, my granddaughter was born. You know, October, there was all kinds of other things going on with my other job. And of course, we all know what happens in November and December, right? Everybody says, I'm busy, it's the holidays. But when God gives you a goal, and you know, like, um, like Brittany said, you know, a goal with a deadline, so I knew I needed to get this done because I wanted to go to leadership as a director. So Stephanie, I can't wait to hang out with you at leadership. <laughs> um, but I knew it's like, okay, well, I've got to get it done. And, um, you know, lots of changes had to happen. I had to be intentional with my time because, you know, working a full-time job, we're all busy, right? We all have busy lives. We have families. We have maybe other jobs. We have things that we're doing, being intentional. Um, and then daily walk with the Lord doing my experiencing God workbook, you know, leaning into him being God centered versus self-centered. So looking where, where God was working and being there with him, uh, being accountable and coachable. Don't we all love that one? Um, you know, that was one thing that, um, it's a great accountability because, when, you know, we get, when we speak truth and go, okay, well, here's what I've done or haven't done, then we get poured into of, okay, well, this is what we need to do. This is the expectation. So we want to make sure reality and expectation are coming together. So, um, October, um, October, November, December. So I'm, I've done differently because I wasn't really working my business during COVID. So honestly, guys, everybody that's on my team right now, it all come from face to face. I did everything in person at our studio here locally. But the one thing I did do is after I would facial them face to face, right? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm learning the whole virtual thing now, even though we do teams calls and stuff in the other J-O-B, 
it's different, right? We are, we're learning different skills. But what I did was once I did the in-person, then I used um, when we would do sip and shops during the holidays, or we would have, you know, recruiting events where we had Zoom calls and you got your customers on, I layered them with those, with those things. Um, here, you know, just on December 30th, as we were running through our finish line, our national area did our get your gear and gear. And so we did it locally at our um, studio, but then we also zoomed in, right? So it was the best of both worlds all at once. So, you know, being able to build face-to-face, -face, you know, love, I love that. Um, and again, just layering, you know, giving, giving women like, you know, lipstick for listening. That was great. Uh, letting them see, you know, for me, getting them on that Zoom call was not, it was letting them see the big picture of Mary Kay. And one of those, I think it was the sip and shop that we did. I'm not really for sure. But what I loved about it, it went all over the country. It showed all different people in Mary Kay, where there were moms, mother, daughters, um, one was like, there was a rocket scientist lady, you know, it's like, there's all kinds of women doing Mary Kay, but showing them it's not just one, it's not like a cookie cutter, right? We are all different, but still able to have this opportunity for, for anybody that chooses it. Um, so, you know, I want you just to all know that, you know, each and every day, you know what Brittany said, it like she had those three directors that did it in eight days. And if I kind of look backwards, I'm like, oh, wow. Um, yeah. You know, if I kind of squished the days together, right. Stephanie's laughing because she's probably going, yep, I did the same thing. Um, you know, like the last day of the year, New Year's Eve, like what's everybody doing, right. They're going out They're They're woohoo. You know, I needed nine and, um, nine's a special number to me you know, everything I do is nine and always has been. And, um, I lost a dear friend that we, you know, believe it or not, I love dirt track racing. God help me. I just can't help myself. Um, and his number and all the people that we hung out with all their numbers were nine. Well, God had it the last day I needed nine. And I lost that friend this year in October, um, in a crazy, stupid accident. But, you know, I knew, I knew who I was and whose I was. And I knew that, you know what, God did not bring me this far to leave me here. And so I'm going to get busy. And, and, you know, I did it in like, instead of probably like eight hours, right? I started around 11 or 12 o'clock that day after church, because it was a Sunday. And I started making those phone calls. And letting people hear my voice, call it old school, right? No, no texting, no messaging, that kind of thing. But letting people hear your passion, hear your dream, because they need to hear your voice. They need to hear uh, what God's laid on your heart and what goal that he's laid there for you. So they'll, you know, women want to help. They just don't know how, because we don't share that with them. But once we share that with them, they know how they can help. And did I get some no's? Absolutely. I got some no's that day. But what I got was nine yeses as well. And so because of that, at 12, 15 at night, when that last order went in, you know, we, we debuted as a Thrive unit. And, um, you know, Thrive for me is, um, you know, I kind of break things down. I'm all about the um, acronyms. It's, you know, Thrive. It's Thrive, Flourish, Progress Towards the Goal, despite of circumstances, grow vigorously, thrive. It's what we do. Because Mary Kay asked us to do one thing, right? Pass it on. And so that's what, you know, each and every one of us on this call should be doing, right? And, you know, now my, my next goal, you know, is those crazy goals is to be able to, um, you know, finish our Equinox by March and then Cadillac by June. So it's, you know, just continuing to you know, set the next goal and set the next goal. So everybody on this call, whether you're red, whether you're, you know, I, I'm hoping there's some DIQs on here that are going to be joining us at leadership. Um, but setting those next goals, being intentional with your goals, sharing with everybody, and sharing your heart. You know, people love 
you know, they'd love to help again, but they just don't know how, but share, share the Mary Kay opportunity because there's so much. I know Donna said this before that, you know, sharing the opportunity of the trips and the Cadillacs and the cars, even if we haven't earned them yet ourselves, they're there because we never know who that next person we're going to recruit is. So Janice, I, I thank you. I see you. Very <laughs> I nice. feel like a ghost. This is my world. I feel like the candlelight ceremony right now. <laughs> okay, so the, anyway. the crazy thing is, I think the, the weather that you're experiencing, George is getting ready to get, because we're supposed well, to get like high winds and nasty rains tonight. So, well, I will tell you, I, I heard a bit of Brittany and I knew she was amazing and was going to be amazing. And then I got to hear Stephanie and I knew I'd came back into here. So I'm busy. You know, I feel like this is the best call I've ever done and I haven't seen most of it or heard it, but 